Hi everyone, Andy Malone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, just to say that today we're going to take a look at records management, the all new and exciting compliance feature in Microsoft 365. And remember, if you like what you see, go ahead, click on that subscribe button. So, are you ready to learn? Let's go. Hi everyone, Andy Malone, Microsoft MVP and Microsoft Certified Trainer. This time we're going to take a look at records management, the all new compliance feature in Microsoft 365. But what does it do and how does it work? Well, let's take a look and see how it works. Okay, so today I'm starting in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. So I'm going to go into Admin and from here, just open that up. From here, I'm going to click on to show all. Then I'm going to come down into compliance. Okay. Now in the compliance center, we've got some very nice new features. Um, and if you want to know about some of those, I've, I've done a couple of videos recently uh, on that. Um, today, I'm going to focus on something that I've not spoke about before. So I'm clicking on show all. I'm scrolling down. And I'm going to click into records management. Now for compliance reasons, it's really important that you understand records management because um, for legal reasons, compliance reasons, you may have to keep certain records that contain certain types of content. Now in the past, you may have used things like data loss prevention policies and they're pretty good. And also things like data retention, again, equally good. But I find records management really good because you can kind of, it accumulates everything in one place, which is really nice. And you get this nice kind of screen showing you everything that's going on. So the, one of the first things that you need to do is really think about creating a file plan. Now, Microsoft here in this example, they've given me some examples. Uh, so you can see I can create various labels here. And some of these are a combination of data loss and data retention uh, policies here. And you can see, depending on the type of data, it, you know, it tells me how long the data is uh, collected for. And at the end of the retention period, of course, what happens to that data. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to create a new label. And I'm going to call this label, I'll call it um, UK um, let's say UK tax records. Okay. So for some reason I need to keep, um, UK tax records for X number of years. You can put in a little description here uh, for both users and of course for admins as well. So, um, then it says, okay, um, do you want to put in a reference ID? Um, do you want to put in a bit, what's the business function? So you can choose what kind of business it's going to be. So in this case, of course, because it's tax, um, it's going to be, uh, is it for financial reasons? Is it for human resources, IT, legal reasons, what have you? So for this, because I'm choosing a tax ID, I'm going to say, okay, this is for a financial reason. So I click onto that. Now, um, again, you can also uh, add in a sub uh, category as well here. So um, maybe financial statements, you need to keep them for X amount of time or payroll information uh, and so on. So if you click onto that, it then says, okay, what's the authority that you've got to keep that information for? So it might be regulatory reasons. It might be legal reasons and so on. So you can see the more you click here, you then go down and it then gives you the citation that you've got to put in uh, here. So for example, here I'm gonna uh, Sarbanes-Oxley Act. And um, I'd just like to point out, this is a US tenant that I'm using, hence the reason I'm getting US uh, citations here as well. You can also add in, add in ones here as well if you don't see the one that's in the list. Um, oh, let me choose that again. Sorry, just click into that and then click on uh, pop that in. Okay, so you can see I'm, I'm 
creating a file plan I'm putting in a retention label and this is the reason why I'm putting in that retention label so it conforms with this act it's a regulatory compliance for financial statements and so on so I click next and then it says okay so what do I want to do um, do I want to define the retention settings? So again, it's saying, how long do you want to keep the data for? So you can, you've got some options, by the way. Um, so uh, again, you it can be years, 10 years. It can make it custom, uh, whatever you want. <clears throat> so um, very important, start the retention period based on when the items were created or when they were modified. So what we mean by modified is, let's say I created something in January and I modified it in March. Well, in that case, the retention period would be seven years from March. So and it, it would keep growing. So the more the data is modified, it would extend further and further. And that's quite useful because uh, certainly some records, you know, if you've not used that record for quite a long time, um, then eventually it will fall out of the scope of what you need it. So when the item was modified, when it was labeled, and you can also do employee activity as well. So an employee leaves the company, for example, you no longer need to keep a record. Um, whether the employee was terminated um, or it might be a product. So, you know, every product uh, has a lifetime uh, that you may want to uh, get rid of. For the purpose of this demo, I'm going to say when the item was created. So I'm going to say during the retention period, I want to retain the items even if the user deletes them. So this is kind of a combination of data loss prevention and data retention. For compliance so this is different to data loss prevention policies um, you can also mark the item as a record the particularly useful in SharePoint so if you've got things like OneDrive for business it marks the item as a, a record um, so I can I can do that if I want to so if you choose that users won't be able to edit or delete that though so just be aware of that okay um, so that basically makes it read only, okay? Um, at the end of the retention period, what do you want me to do? So typically with 365, when you delete something, it goes into the retention uh, or to the recycle bin, I should say. And the recycle bin, it's there's two stages to the recycle bin. One, it goes there for the 30 days. And then after that, it goes into a secondary recycle bin for another 63 days. At the end of that 63 day period, it's deleted permanently. Okay, now, um, so that that's what will happen there. Now, the other thing that you can do is you can say, okay, no, I don't want it deleted. I want to trigger a disposition review. And what this does uh, is basically you can say, okay, um, you know, contact the sales team before this document is deleted or contact the document owner before it's deleted. So it's basically saying, you know, are you sure you want to delete that? Do you still need it? Um, or do you want me to do nothing? OK, so am I uh, doing nothing here? Uh, the item will just basically stay there. OK, um, do you want me to retain it forever so you can retain something forever? Um, only delete items when they reach a certain age. So rather than having um, retaining the items from seven years when it was created, you could just put in this one, only delete the items when they reach seven years. Okay. And then there's this on here. Don't retain or delete items. So for example, that could be like personal things. Okay. So I'm going to click next. Okay, um, then it says, okay, who are going to be your reviewers? So um, I'm using a user called Megan, uh, and you would typically put in a, oh, okay. Um, you, you would typically put in the user, oh, there she is, there you go, just a little bit slow. Okay, so Megan has gone in, and she's my disposition uh, reviewer. Um, if I click next, 
I then get the review and I can now go ahead and create that label. All right. Okay, so that's my label completed. And it's saying, okay, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to put, publish the label um, to uh, all Microsoft 365 locations? So that's including Exchange, SharePoint, Teams, and so on. Do you want me to auto apply the label? So you can auto apply this to a specific type of content. So you can choose, you know, it might be for, I don't know, you, you know, and you can choose what kind of content that's going to be for. Or you can just save the label and decide what to do with it later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for all different uh, Microsoft 365 documents. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to publish that label now. Okay. So now it says, okay, it's going to create a policy now. So it says, okay, do you want to um, basically publish these labels um, uh, UK tax records. So I'm going to say yes. At this point, I can go in and I can edit that if I want to. And then it says, okay, do you want me to choose the labels for this? So Exchange, 365 Groups, OneDrive, or do you want me to choose specific locations? I'm just going to accept the default. So that's absolutely fine. So I'm going to uh, call this my um, UK uh, policy. And I'm going to click next. All right. So you can see here the label is being published. Um, you can choose, um, you can edit this at any point if you want. Choose to specific users and groups. So it's going to all uh, specific re recipients. So you might only want this to go to certain groups or certain recipients. Absolutely, you can do that. For the purpose of the demo, I've just chosen all. All right, so I'm now ready to publish my, my label policy. So off it goes, and I've now published it. Yay, okay, so click on done, and then I go back to my label plan. And you can see that my UK tax record, you can see it's now been, it's going for finance. You can see uh, financial statements, and that's now there for seven years. And you can see I've set that review up there as well so that Megan can go in and check. So that's my file plan. I can go in and view the various policies here. So here's my UK policy that I had. And um, the other thing that we have here, you've also got events. So I mentioned that you can create a, a file plan and a policy based on a specific events. Now, by default, you do get a number of kind of default event um, settings. So employee activity, for example, um, maybe the contract has been terminated. You don't need to keep the content once that employee leaves, for example. A product lifetime, you can also create your own as well. So there's, there's other things that you can put in uh, there for you. So that can be quite useful, actually. Um, so, uh, if, you know, you can base it on an event. So I can go in and I can say, OK, manage event types. Um, and you can also, like I said, you can create your own uh, events there as well. So when you're creating the file plan, um, you know, it can, you know, if an event takes place or if something happens, then do this. So keep it for five years. Um, as long as the employee still works for the company. So if the employee leaves the company, then of course um, uh, you don't need to keep him anymore. So I've also got some other labels here. So you can see there's some other labels. So for example here, if I click into let's say public, I can click into public here and you can see that this uh, this particular label is there. Um, any These are kind of standard ones that you get. Um, but of course, you can also um, add them to your uh, label policies there as well. OK, so you can create label policies and add those labels in. Or when you create a file plan, it will then in turn create a label policy. All right. Now, once you've deployed that, um, then you get this nice records management screen here and it will pick out. It will show you. 
at the moment um, how many people are being impacted by that policy that you've created. So it would, it's, a, it's a nice kind of one-stop shop. Um, all pending dispositions. So uh, again, um, if anything that you're monitoring, any files that you're monitoring that you need to go in and uh, manage. Okay. And uh, there you go. You can manage any of your file plans there. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is records management. So there you have it, records management as part of the all new Compliance Center in Microsoft 365. Remember, if you've enjoyed this session, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and you won't miss any future postings. Also, do remember to give me your feedback. I love your questions and comments. So please pop them down there uh, in the comments section below. So I hope you've enjoyed this session. And uh, until next time, thanks so much for dropping by and you stay safe. Take care. Thanks so much for dropping by. Remember you can visit me at andymalone.org and go ahead and click on that subscribe button so that you don't miss a thing. I'll see you next time.